There's just one other thing, sir. What's that? I'll explain it to you in a minute. May I use your telephone? Go right ahead. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sunday Wire. I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen. We're streaming out live on the Alternate Current Radio Network. And also after the show, we'll be available on the podcasting platforms, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and many others. If you're listening on any of the other apps uh, as well, you can find us there, including the Speaker app, which is also the home of the ACR Mothership of programming all of acr's programming you can access very quickly and easily by going to the alternate current radio speaker channel there and also at alternate current radio.com as well for more information about shows show descriptions and archives you can also find that there at alternate current radio.com is a link on the show page right now uh, now our special guest uh, is joining us on the live link right now she's a investigative journalist from Bulgaria, and her name is Diliana Ketanyeva, and she's joining us now from Sofia on the live link. Uh, we're going to talk about her story. There's a link on the show page to Arms Watch, armswatch.com. That's a newer organization founded by Diliana and what she's been doing for the last few years, and many of you are familiar with her work. She has been tracking the weapons trafficking from the United States, organized by the United States government, using partner states in the EU, being paid for by Saudi Arabia, and ending up in the hands of terrorists uh, in places like Syria, in places like Yemen. And this latest installment of her investigation has exposed just that. Mortar shells and other ammunitions who are being produced in countries like Serbia like Bulgaria, like other places, and coming from Croatia even, ending up in the hands of ISIS, ISIS fighters in Yemen, but also in Syria as well. And she's on the line right now. Hello, Diliana. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me again on your program. No, it's, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. This is absolutely incredible, this story, Diliana. I know that you've been working on this type, these types of stories uh, for a couple of years now. And you've gotten some some results, I think, in terms of visibility. And uh, when you started Arms Watch and you did this latest three-part uh, installment of this investigation that uh, really drew back to, to the roots of the uh, manufacturer, it didn't seem to get much attention at all at the time. But then something incredible happened. And the whistleblower, this is the one who provided the documents for this story, was unmasked and arrested and thrown in prison. And then a whole other story has uh, come out of this right now. As we're looking on your social media feeds right now, there are literally crowds of people who were outside the prison demanding the release of this whistleblower. His name is Alexander Abradovich, and he is a employee of Krusik, arms manufacturer in Serbia. Now this, uh, this has turned into a, a, somewhat of a movement and somewhat of a national scandal Diliana. But before I go any further, just to explain to us how this all started for, for those people who, who aren't very uh, aware of all the details of this story. A few months ago, I anonymously received uh, leaked documents from the Serbian arms factory Krusik, including uh, emails, internal memos, contracts, uh, delivery schedules, um, all information uh, uh, regarding weapon supplies uh, to unknown locations um, in the Middle East. I didn't uh, know at that time, firstly, who the whistleblower was. I didn't know where these weapons were going. The documents uh, were about th 3 million pieces of Serbian weapons. I'm talking about mortar shells and rockets. So what I did was to start watching a lot of uh, videos and footage from Yemen, from um, Syria, in order to find out where these uh, Serbian weapons were going. And um, I 
I found um, Serbian uh, mortar shells. Uh, I'm talking about brand new mortar shells. No, I'm not talking about old weapons. I'm talking about brand new weapons uh, manufactured in order to be delivered to um, at that point a known location. So I found uh, Serbian mortar shells, shells in the hands of Islamic State terrorists in Yemen and also in, in um, Syria. And in two particular cases, um, the identification mark on these mortar shells in the hands of Islamic State terrorists in Yemen in their propaganda video was clearly visible. And I traced uh, um, these weapons back to their original supplier. I'm talking about two uh, separate uh, videos and photos published by the Islamic State in Yemen. In the first case, it turned out that uh, the supplier was the U.S. government. In the second case, uh, the supplier was the Saudi Defense Ministry. This is what uh, the documentation from Krusik uh, proved that these weapons were purchased uh, by the U.S. government and in the second case by the Saudi Defense Ministry, but these weapons ended up in the hands of Islamic State terrorists in Yemen. I published this uh, three-part investigation. It became a scandal, local scandal in uh, Serbia, because the exporter was a company called uh, GIM, represented by the Serbian Vice Prime Minister Minister's father, Nebojša Stefanović, this is the name of the interior, interior minister of Serbia. He is also vice prime minister of Serbia. And uh, the scandal was um, over, literally, for a few days, uh, because in Serbia, um, many of the media outlets are government controlled. They are not independent. So uh, the scandal was over. But... Uh, when I published my last uh, investigation, the last, the third part of this investigation, three days later, the whistleblower stopped uh, answering me. I didn't know who he was, but I was in contact with him. I was very worried that something had happened, but I didn't know. I, I just thought that he disappeared in order to protect himself. He never said um, anything about his identity. I didn't know who he was. And uh, two, probably a week and a half uh, later, uh, local newspapers broke the story that uh, the whistleblower who leaked the documents to me was arrested, that he uh, was put in uh, jail for leaking trade secrets, even not state uh, secrets, trade uh, secrets to a foreigner, in this case, me. And uh, people gathered in front of the prison in uh, Belgrade and uh, it was two-day protest and uh, the local authorities released uh, Alexander Obradovic um, under house arrest. But this didn't um, end uh, there and people continued protesting and yesterday there was a huge rally in Belgrade um, in front of the prosecutor's office demanding uh, uh, freedom for Alexander Obradovic as well as resignation of the whole government and I'm very thankful for that support. I didn't expect such overwhelming support by the Serbian people but um, um, it is uh, something very motivating and I hope that many people will come forward because it turns out that this is just a uh, a small part of the whole corruption scheme that rules uh, uh, Serbia. And uh, I also want to point out to people as well, uh, Diliana, that you've been very proactive in terms of getting this information out, not just publishing it at Arms Watch, uh, and it's also been republished in, in a few places, but you've also sent what, you're, what you've learned in your investigation, you've forwarded on to various authorities. Uh, European authorities, you've, so you forwarded it to Ser Serbian authorities, I assume, but also to EU parliamentary regulators as well, to the United Nations that has a division that handles weapons trafficking, but also to Interpol. This is a, a, the Inter-European Countries Police Investigation Force for Serious Crimes to Interpol. So you've been quite proactive. Have you had any response from any of these? No, unfortunately, I haven't had any response yet, uh, which is very 
sad and very disappoint disappointing because these are the international bodies, these are the international institutions supposed to prevent arms trafficking to terrorists. I don't know what's the use of uh, uh, the United Nations if they can't react and, and they can't stop uh, the arms trafficking to the Islamic State in uh, Yemen, the organization that the United States has recognized as terrorist organization. Uh, also, I don't know why the European Union um, also um, is not interested in this arms trafficking because these are European weapons and Serbia is uh, a candidate state and all this proves uh, the hypocrisy of uh, all these international bodies because uh, they claim to fight terrorism but uh, in actual terms they keep silent and the only result is that the person, the whistleblower who risked it all to provide this information to the public is now arrested and uh, they just try to keep us all silent so that people don't know the truth. L luckily, Serbian people are on the streets and they demand justice and I hope justice will be served because not the whistleblower must be arrested. The, those who must be arrested are the arms traffickers and the government officials who have been arming terrorists for so long and they're responsible for the death of hundreds of thousands of people in uh, Syria and in Yemen. This is war crime. They must be punished for this war crime. And I'm very surprised. Uh, I'm actually I'm surprised by the article uh, which was published as an interview I think you did with Radio Free Europe. Uh, and this is a United States government-backed media outlet that, uh, for, for for a lot of its uh, output, uh, really disseminates a lot of U.S. Uh, government foreign policy propaganda. But like NPR in the United States, it kind of falls under a similar funding mechanisms in the U.S. They do occasionally do some reports in the public interest, and they've actually given you a fair interview, uh, which they've published. I was very surprised that they uh, they they printed everything basically and they gave you absolutely a fair opportunity to express everything that you want to express uh, from what i read in that interview i mean were you surprised they didn't uh, censor that i was surprised by the objectivity uh, you know, of uh, radio free europe in this case because uh, it shows that when journalists are willing to challenge the government uh, agenda and uh, when they are willing to show the truth, they can do it. The local journalist, the Serbian correspondent uh, from Radio Free Europe, is, uh, um, is such a proof that when journalists uh, really want to do their job, they can do it. Uh, I am very thankful to this Serbian journalist from uh, Radio Free, Free Europe, who uh, published uh, everything and uh, presented the story as it is without changing anything, without challenging uh, the truth. So it is great that, uh, and this is an example, that when journalists want to be, um, uh, to show the truth, they can do it. It is not uh, an excuse when journalists uh, just say uh, that it is uh, very risky, we can lose our job. No, if you want to be truthful, if you want to show the, uh, the truth, you can do it. And. Uh, uh, this is a very good and very motivating example. No matter that this is uh, uh, U.S. government funded media, they show the truth. And uh, this, the Serbian reaction, the Ser Serbian establishment reaction, has been interesting. They've attacked you, the journalist. Uh, they, they're obviously attacking the whistleblower, uh, the credibility of, of both yourself and the whistleblower. They've accused you of they're trying to set you against the whistleblower saying that you've somehow compromised the whistleblower uh, as a journalist, which uh, doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, you said that uh, you were communicating anonymously, so he would be have been unmasked some other way, probably internally, most likely, or with the help of an external foreign agency, possibly. But but more than that, they, they've come up with some conspiracy theories to say uh, that, that somehow... It's a it's a Russian plot or it's a Bulgarian plot to somehow cut Serbia out of the international arms business <laughs> by creating a scandal. Yeah, so it, so. Funny. Yeah, go yes. ahead. Because they, 
I was uh, an object uh, of a smear campaign by pro-government uh, Serbian media uh, outlets. They wrote that um, I was um, uh, in the center of a vicious plot uh, organized by Bulgarian arms dealers who wants to take uh, the business from the Serbian arms manufacturer Krusik in order to sell weapons, more weapons to Saudi Arabia. But they just ignore the fact that I have been investigating Bulgarian weapons as well in the hands of terrorists in uh, uh, different war zones. And I have urged many times the Bulgarian government to stop arms exports to Saudi Arabia. So what, what I've been doing with the Serbian weapons, I've been doing with the Bulgarian weapons as well, and all weapons originating from Eastern Europe that ended up in the hands of terrorists in Syria and in Yemen. And this is just because they don't uh, know what else to say. They try to present the whole story as a foreign interference in the Serbian internal affairs. Uh, but my explanation is that this whistleblower, it turns out that he was in contact with local journalists as well. I don't know why these local journalists uh, didn't publish this whole story. I have no idea. I haven't been following the Serbian media uh, publications because I don't speak Serbian. I do understand a little Serbian, but I, I haven't uh, read that much from the cover coverage of this story. But it turns out that I wasn't the only journalist who this, ju this whistleblower had contacted and um, uh, I, I believe that he contacted me because firstly I'm independent, I'm freelance journalist, I've been investigating weapon supplies uh, for quite some time and um, probably he trusted me and he knew that I would uh, not ignore any single fact in this whole story. and. Uh, Unfortunately, local investigative journalists attacked me that by saying that these documents were from Krusik, this is the Serbian arms factory, I compromised uh, the identity of the whistleblower, which is a total lie because the documents themselves, uh, they uh, bear all signs of Krusik. I mean, the stamp of Krusik. Uh, is everywhere on the documents and it is clearly visible that these documents originated from Krusik. So even if I hadn't written that these documents from the Serbian arms factory Krusik that were leaked to me, uh, even if I hadn't written this, uh, everybody would recognize that these are documents from Krusik because uh, it is written in the documents themselves. I don't know why they attacked me. I, I have no explanation but um, I think uh, Serbian people know better than uh, them that um, I uh, and the whistleblower did what we had to do, first as human beings and secondly as uh, um, citizens uh, that are obliged to expose any crime that we have witnessed. I, I've witnessed this in my country, I've witnessed this in Aleppo, I saw Bulgarian grad rockets uh, in a warehouse uh, used by Al-Qaeda in Aleppo, I showed this, I did what I am supposed, I was supposed to do as a Bulgarian, as a human being, as a journalist. This is what the whistleblower also did because he had witnessed uh, these crimes uh, for, for probably two or three years and when I asked him myself why are you doing this? This is what I firstly asked. He said, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I need uh, to show the truth. So this was uh, his only motivation. And uh, they, the prosecutors try to try to keep him silent because obviously he knows uh, a lot about all type of crimes committed uh, by the Serbian authorities with regards to Krusik because Krusik is a state-owned company. And it turns out that the father of the Serbian interior minister sold weapons to Saudi Arabia, which ended up in the hands of Islamic State in uh, Yemen, by uh, corruption practices. Because the father of the Serbian interior minister purchased these weapons from Krusik at a much lower price than the real price of these weapons, which means that the profit was generated somewhere in the middle of these deals. Uh, in order to benefit uh, him, I mean, the Serbian uh, interior minister's father. Also, in the documents, it was um, 
indicated that some of the uh, weapons were uh, res resold to Saudi Arabia via an offshore company registered in the British Virgin Islands. But the Serbian prosecutors are not interested in the fact that uh, the father of the Serbian interior minister was involved in offshore deals uh, with Saudi Arabia about weapons which ended up ended up in the hands of Islamic State terrorists in Yemen. This is not interesting for them. They don't think that this is a crime and they ignored my letter informing them about this crime. And uh, now what's happening is that people in Serbia are on the streets and they demand justice and they demand freedom for Alexander Obradovich and arrest for the Serbian interior minister's father because the Serbian interior minister abused his power by arresting the whistleblower in order to protect his own father. So here we are talking about so many crimes committed by the Serbian authorities in order to stifle this um, dissent that now people in uh, and the fact that Serbian people want uh, the resignation of the whole government. And uh, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Serbia, Nebosha Stefanovic, he, he is also the Minister of the Police. Is that correct? He holds two positions? Yes, he holds two positions. So uh, he is the Vice Prime Minister and also the Interior Minister. And uh, they accuse uh, the whistleblower, I mean the prosecutors, accuse the whistleblower that he didn't follow the steps uh, stipulated by law in Serbia to become or to receive the status of whistleblower. But according to the Serbian law, uh, he must uh, inform the, the authorities if he wants to be protected as a whistleblower. But which authorities? He must inform the director of Krušik, who is involved in all these deals. He must inform the police when the interior minister's father is the one who is involved in these crimes which, which the whistleblowers want to expose. Also, he can't inform the security services because they are under uh, the ruling of the interior minister. He can't inform the prosecutors because obviously the prosecutors are not independent and as we see by the arrest of whistleblower, they protect the government. He can't inform the defense ministry, which is uh, the owner of this uh, arms factory, because uh, um, this ministry has approved these deals. There is nobody that he has uh, uh, to inform, because all are involved. Uh, also, I read in one of his interviews that he had informed uh, uh, the uh, anonymously group of workers in Krušik had informed the Serbian president about what was going on in Krušik, and they received no answer. So they tried to follow the law and provide this information to the, the authorities or the highest ranking uh, official in Serbia, the president, but they received no answer. So that is why this whistleblower turned to the media in order to expose these crimes. He had no other option rather than informing the media and providing information which is in the public interest. And this is even not a state secret. This information is just trade secret regarding arms deals between different parties. This is all. And I didn't see in any of the documents that they are top secret or secret. There wasn't such marking in, on the document. So there isn't anything secret that he had exposed. What he exposed was corruption at the, at the highest level in Serbia. And what I continued to uh, do was to find where these weapons uh, were going. And I found that they were going uh, to the Islamic State in Yemen. So it's my responsibi responsibility as well, because I published these documents. I knew that it, is, it was very risky, but uh, this was my obligation as a journalist. And I followed all... Uh, um, uh, I, fo I followed all steps that I could to, in order to protect uh, the, the whistleblower. Unfortunately, I myself probably had been subjected to surveillance and uh, I don't know how exactly they came to him. I have no idea because this information is secret in Serbia. They don't provide access to journalists to the law case, so we don't know how they uh, exactly uh, found who the whistleblower was, but uh, that's the fact. 
uh, facts. And uh, now I hope uh, uh, in the following weeks the court will uh, deliver another another decision and uh, free him. Although what's happening now is that the prosecutors postponed the the law case and uh, they have to deliver a new decision in the following three months. So can they can uh, postpone it as longer as they want. Yeah, and that's another another uh, tactic uh, that the, the the government may use yeah, to drag this on uh, to the point where hopefully the protests will die down, the opposition might die down, and uh, the person who is being persecuted will have maybe less public support and ability to defend themselves. But the trade secret argument is uh, is quite bogus. Uh, trade secrets would normally refer to proprietary technology or something to do with uh, some kind of competitive advantage uh, in terms of intellectual property, not who the company is selling to. So you're talking about secret sales in this case. And so how could you have secret sales? If, if the sales are secret, it means that uh, something illegal is happening. And, of course, trafficking arms into terrorist hands uh, would definitely be in violation of a European law, international law. The United States, of course, is involved in arranging this. It's against U.S. law, technically as well. But and it's the Ser- U.N. embargo, because Serbia and T- uh, Syria and Yemen are under U.N. embargo. And they violated the UN embargo in these two countries. But it seems that it is not interesting to the Serbian prosecutors. It is not interesting to the United Nations, Interpol, uh, or other organizations, because uh, it would expose an international weapons shipment network for arming terrorists. Literally terrorists, because Islamic State is a terrorist organization. Well, in uh, Syria, they many times said we are uh, arming moderate rebels. Here we are talking about the Islamic State and the Islamic State terrorists provided evidence themselves by publishing these photos with Serbian weapons in their hands. And when I trace back the Serbian weapons, they were procured by the U.S. government and by the Saudi Defense Ministry. I don't know uh, what evidence else we can provide. I really don't know when you have uh, the weapons in the hands of the terrorists and when you have the documents proving who the original suppliers were. I don't know what else we can provide. And when you have the person who exposed this crime uh, in the prison in order to keep him silent. I'm uh, I'm shocked, really shocked, because uh, in the 21st century uh, such things can happen. And... Uh, this is a abuse of power, this is violation of human rights, this, this is all type of crimes in one case that anybody can imagine. And so, so that's really important what you, just, what you just said there. You said a network of international weapons shipments and trafficking. And it is a network, and your, your work is very thorough, uh, Diliana. The, the detail is absolutely there. In, in fact, there's enough detail there for any any journalist, not even the greatest journalist in the world, to go in there and just cherry pick and take out even a section of your reports and blow it up into a featured investigation. And so it's a network. And let me just tell tell me if this is correct in how this network is is designed. The, the United States will organize or procure uh, supplies of weapons using... Uh, product coming from certain countries like Serbia, so produced in Serbia, arranged by the United States by web, by contractors who are under contract with the Department of Defense, uh, and then using uh, British holding companies to run the financial transactions or to, to to create another layer of payment, and and then supplying it to Saudi Arabia as the end user, who then transfers it to militants in Yemen or Syria. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six layers. In fact, there's some additional layers as well to these yes. transactions. Yes, exactly. mm-hmm. it is exactly. It is like uh, wandering of weapons because uh, they use different uh, schemes, different routes. It's not only uh, this scheme that you mentioned. There are many other routes via which the weapons ended up. In, for instance, in Syria, uh, in one of the cases. Uh, uh, part of the European weapons uh, since 2017 have been uh, transferred to Syria via Croatia. 
I will explain in short the scheme. Krushik uh, exported weapons uh, for the U.S. government, uh, for Pentagon contractors, uh, to Croatia. The weapons were stored in a local uh, Pentagon depot under a program codenamed Task Force Smoking Gun. Uh, this uh, secret arms depot was uh, 30 kilometers from the Rijeka airport. This is a Croatian airport. From Croatia, this Croatian airport, uh, American carriers, again Pentagon contractors, transported the Serbian weapons or other European weapons to Qatar. Um, the the uh, two American air companies, Kalita Air and uh, Atlas Air, transported the weapons. And even Croatian uh, journalists, after I published this investigation, Croatian journalists found photos of the same uh, planes that I uh, exposed in this investigation. They found the same flights uh, and provided photos of the same planes being loaded with these Serbian weapons. They, they uh, provided uh, photo uh, evidence. Then from Croatia via Ayudate military air base in Qatar, the weapons were smuggled to Syria. The end user on papers was either the U.S. Special Operations Command or it, it even wasn't mentioned in the contracts, which was, which was very strange because you can't buy weapons and uh, not provide information who the end user was. Plus, even in the cases when the U.S. Special Operations Command was the end user, these are non-U.S. standard weapons and they are not in use by the U.S. Army, which means that the U.S. Special Operations Command wasn't uh, the end user of these weapons. You have so many countries involved. You have the Serbian government involved. You have the Bulgarian government involved. The Croatian government, which allowed uh, this Pentagon uh, secret unit, uh, U.S. Task Force uh, smoking gun, to use um, a state-run uh, company's warehouse in uh, Potkum, Croatia. The uh, Croatian state uh, uh, company is called uh, Agency Alarm. It also has a contract with the Pentagon for arms uh, uh, deals. And also uh, the Pentagon used uh, the warehouse of this state company to store uh, weapons from Europe and to transfer them to Syria. So, Bulgarian, Serbian, Croatian government, Qatar as well, uh, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates. You see how many countries are involved. Uh, this is International Weapons Shipment Network and all journalists uh, that contacted me when I published this investigation uh, in the beginning were very interested in this story. Then they published nothing. I provided documents to them. I was contacted by British journalists, mainstream media uh, journalists, to ask me about the British broker that uh, uh, was used to mediate uh, these arms deals between the US government and the Serbian arms factory. They published nothing. They just took the documents and published nothing, which is shame on them because uh, they are obviously cowards and they, they can't uh, risk as the Serbian arms uh, whistleblower did, or as I'm doing, to show the truth. They, they are just cowards. I'm so disappointed and I am very thankful to you because uh, you are not afraid and you always uh, support such investigations and uh, you are uh, delivering uh, this uh, news to your Western uh, viewers and listeners and I'm very thankful to you, Patrick. Well, we're, we're very thankful for you as well, Diliana, because you, you've worked very hard and uh, very meticulously to expose what is an international racket. Uh, it's the only way I can really describe it. This is a racket. It's been going on for years. In fact, it's been going on for decades. It's been going on since at least the Vietnam War, when the U.S. were involved with all sorts of uh, arming of various factions in Laos and Cambodia and so forth, and also running drugs as well. Central America comes to mind as well with Nicaragua and the Contras. And we have the exact same scenario here in the Middle East, only the actors are different, the players are different, the methods might be slightly different in terms of the supply chain, but the end result is the same, and that is flooding a region with weapons illegally uh, running wars by proxy rather than directly 
uh, in order to avoid any prying eyes of the public or the press. So that's why these schemes are obfuscated with uh, four, five, six, seven layers of transactions and uh, very well hidden behind various walls of bureaucracy and paperwork. And I might add, too, it's interesting, you said other journalists uh, had this information. One of the uh, outlets is very interesting uh, called BIRN and the Balkan Investigative Research Network, I think they're called. They have been uh, accused by some as receiving uh, Open Society or Soros-linked funding. I'm not sure what the details are exactly on that. But I know I looked at some of these outlets' as coverage of this and also the previous weapons story that you did. And I noticed that some of these outlets, they don't, they don't cover everything. They're very selective in who the, who they sort of highlight as being the uh, you know you know the guilty party, as it were. And some of them avoid putting too much of a spotlight on the United States. Very careful, and some some avoid Saudi Arabia as well. And I, I notice others will focus on different things. The BBC even did a piece of this uh, for, for reporting in Syria, but of course it didn't really implicate the United States at all. So uh, it's interesting, Diliana, how different outlets will look at this story but won't report it in its totality. They'll cherry-pick certain aspects of it in order to create a story, but doesn't, it doesn't implicate the entire network. Ha- have you noticed this in any of the coverage, or could you give us a, any more insight on, on how, how they're approaching this story, some of these other networks? Uh, what I noticed, uh, people from Serbia sent me links uh, to BBC Serbia, in which uh, it is uh, written that Aleksandar Obradovic is not a whistleblower. So, how can they say that? This person risked his life. He is. Uh, 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 he has been arrested. Um, he is. He will be jobless. Uh, even if they free him, he will be jobless forever, probably, because this is Serbia. This is like what happened to me once I lost my job after this investigation about the Bulgarian weapons uh, in the hands of Islamic State terrorists in uh, 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 Al Qaeda terrorists in Aleppo. I lost my job. I'm jobless. It's been two years, I'm jobless in Bulgaria, and nobody wants to employ me because obviously I'm not a wanted journalist. So he will be jobless forever. He has a a small kid. In the interviews, he mentions that his eight-year-old son uh, in the beginning was told that his father was um, on an assignment abroad. Then they told him that his father was arrested because he exposed corruption in Serbia. Um, can you imagine what does uh, this mean for one person? How uh, this impacts uh, the uh, the life of him and his family? And I can't imagine journalists, local journalists in Serbia, from BBC Serbia, who knows uh, who know very well the truth. I was also interviewed by these Serbian journalists from BBC Serbia. They know very well the truth. They know that the, the Serbian government uh, has tried to cover it all up. And in the end, what they produced was that this man was not a whistleblower, which is very, which is disgusting. And uh, it shows the moral of these people. I don't know how they sleep at night, how they look themselves in the mirror. I'm so angry because uh, by writing such lies, they impact somebody's life and the life of uh, his family, his kid, and it's, uh, it's disgusting. The journalists don't realize how responsible they are for, for the suffering of so many people. Uh, BBC, this is a program that I, I will not watch anymore. Uh, really, I, I will not watch them anymore, and I don't want to watch them because they, they are liars. How can yeah, they say the- that the whistleblower is not the whistleblower? And uh, uh, what they, they do want to say, that he is a criminal? For exposing corruption, I'm very disappointed. Well, this is a pattern uh, that we've seen states, governments, mainstream media attacking whistleblowers, attacking uh, journalists. We look at the, the big high-profile example. This would be the persecution of Julian Assange, of Chelsea Manning, of Jeremy Hammond. Is, is an example where they've absolutely used all the state's resources, a- agencies, media, uh, in order to defame, uh, to degrade, to incarcerate, to apprehend, and to imprison journalists and and whistleblowers uh, who who have embarrassed really the government, who have embarrassed 
uh, some of the most powerful governments in the world. And I think the same thing is happening here at Diliana, although it's a slightly smaller scale. Um, but I think in terms of the public reaction, uh, I think is, is in proportionally is much greater in Serbia in support of this whistleblower, I think, than the proportion or percentage of people supporting, let's say, Julian Assange in Britain, where only a few hundred people you know, will come to support him at a rally. But you have more than that now in Belgrade, in a much smaller country. So this is, it's very interesting uh, what has happened here. I mean, you must be surprised how this has escalated. How, are, are you? I'm very, very surprised. I, I didn't expect that because I'm constantly receiving messages from Serbian people. They say, uh, we live under a regime. This is dictatorship. Uh, they explain me that uh, when they go to protest, um, they receive threats by local authorities, like, you know, your, li- your wife uh, wants to work uh, here. We will not give her a job. We will fire her. Uh, they try to intimidate people who are protesting. And I think uh, certain people now, they, they have enough of this. They uh, want uh, to bring a change. They want to live in a free country because Serbia has suffered so much. Serbia knows what war means. Um, and Serbia, uh, Serbian people, they, they can't accept uh, uh, this anymore. And uh, uh, I think the example of uh, Alexander Obradovich was a turning point uh, for them because they realized that uh, this is so uh, so huge. This is about them. This is about their future. Because Serbia now uh, is applying for a membership in the European Union, and they realize that if they want a real change, they must they must fight for their for this change. And they have been fighting for so long, so it's not surprising for me knowing the Serbian people. But what was surprising for me was that. Um, um they challenged their government directly they took to the streets yesterday challenging the government directly they wanted the resignation of the whole government um and um we'll see what's happening next uh, but i think now the government just uh, waits to see um how they can uh, try to turn this anger of the people to something else and Probably they will try to invent another scandal so that people forget about Alexander Obradovich and uh, they will try to buy the people's love. We will see. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I might add that Croatia, just to, to add one more note, Croatia heavily involved uh, really since at least as far as my, my records show, 2013 uh, in flying massive, massive amounts of weapons uh, that have ended up in fueling the conflict in Syria. Um, That's fairly well documented. And they became an EU member state regardless. Um, This was publicly known and it didn't, I don't think it hurt their EU membership bid uh, at all. I think the EU kind of looked the other way. So I'm, I'm not impressed with Brussels in, uh, in, in how it, uh, is approaching some of these the, these issues here from member states or uh, candidate member states that are applying to join the EU. Uh, it's it's doesn't inspire a lot of confidence uh, in terms of the EU. Uh, so I just want to uh, make that point. <laughs> lastly, but uh, I think um, D- Diliana now we'll, we'll keep an eye on this story. Uh, be very interesting to see how this is going to. Uh, develop is, is are there any hearings or legal dates coming up regarding Alexander that that people should know about or h- how is his case going to progress? It's not very clear what's happening next because uh, the prosecutors postponed the court hearing and they haven't set up a date when this court hearing uh, is going to take place. They just they are obliged by law to uh, fix such hearing in the following three months, but they haven't uh, announced uh, anything so far. And what is also very interesting is that the name of the prosecutors, it is secret information. We, the journalists, 
are not supposed to know the name of the prosecutor who uh, put Alexander uh, Obradovich in jail. This is secret information. Can you imagine? Uh, it is so shameful. It is this is not justice. When the person uh, vested in power who arrested an innocent people, a person, the whistleblower, is anonymous. They even can't uh, um, go out and show their faces to the public, and they are anonymous. Can you imagine what we are talking about? So it is a crime, according to them, that Alexander Obradovich exposed corruption at the highest level in Serbia. But it is not. It is perfectly fine if they can. Those people that are um, supposed to deliver justice are anonymous, and it's very shameful. Uh, even in Bulgaria, this can't happen. Even in Bulgaria, I'm uh, Bulgarian. Um, the same crimes happen in Bulgaria all the time. But even this can happen in my country. And Bulgaria is the poorest country in the European Union. We have a lot of issues with corruption. But this can't happen uh, even in my country. To arrest a whistleblower who exposes corruption, to uh, keep the prosecutor anonymous, and uh, to um, uh, tarnish uh, the reputation of this whistleblower by saying that he works for foreign interests. How? When he exposed corruption in his own country, and this is to work for foreign interests. It is uh, shameful, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope uh, people will uh, learn the name of the prosecutors very soon, and uh, will investigate this prosecutor, because uh, what he has been doing is abuse of power, which itself is a crime. Yes, this is exactly what's uh, happening in the United States. They're scapegoating uh, domestic corruption, instead blaming foreign actors for all their domestic problems. This is exactly a, a trend we're seeing in, in the U.S. and Europe as well. So this is a way of deflecting criticism. Uh, governments are using this, uh, blaming foreign actors or foreign influence and so forth. Um, I, I'm going to say the last thing I'm going to say, Diliana, I just find it absolutely, to me, unbelievable that Serbia, of all countries, uh, a country that knows full well, as you said, the horrors of war, but a, a country that also itself was a victim of CIA and Saudi intelligence trafficking Mujahideen fighters and arms into the conflict in Yugoslavia that resulted in many deaths and destabilization, arming and f funding the KLA, the Kosovo and Liberation Army. Uh, m many of those fighters were recycled and are fighting in Syria under various uh, terrorist factions, including al-Nusra, HTS, and so forth. That's documented uh, coming from the Balkans. Of all countries, S Serbia should be <laughs> avoiding any any sort of scenarios because they should know more than anybody the horrors of trafficking weapons uh, for illegal proxy wars and and what that does to countries like Syria, for instance, or Yemen. They should know better than anybody. And I, I find that shocking that they'd be involved of all countries that would be involved in this in this operation. It's just unbelievable, Diliana. I I, I can't believe it. Um, no, I. I can't believe it because here we are talking about not Serbia in general, but about uh, their government or uh, certain representatives of the Serbian government. Uh, but uh, talking to ordinary Serbian people, they are totally against this. They can't accept that Serbian weapons can be seen in the hands of terrorists in such war zones like Sir, uh, as uh, Syria and Yemen. They say that they feel ashamed that this is not uh, Serbia, this is uh, their uh, corrupt government. So, uh, to be honest, uh, we must separate Serbia from uh, certain representatives uh, of the Serbian government, because uh, what Serbian people show is that they are not their government, and they don't want uh, the, such types of crimes to happen in uh, in Serbia. And they took to the streets uh, yesterday and showed solidarity with uh, the whistleblower, and uh, uh, they showed uh, their anger um, at the government, and uh, they will keep fighting. I'm uh, very, very surprised, and I'm very impressed by the Serbian people. What they showed was that uh, they are uh, together, and uh, they, they, they will fight. They will not leave it like this. 
And for any updates on on what's happening there on the ground in Serbia, I I would recommend people just go to Diliana's uh, Twitter feed. Uh, there's a link to it on our show page. Uh, and uh, is there any other sources of information that um, people should should keep an eye on? Or are you retweeting stuff that you're you're getting, Diliana? Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to explain this uh, story and. Uh, for your constant support and I will keep you updated all the time because I think what's happening in Serbia is very indicative of uh, us or, or, or the, the situation uh, in Serbia is a very good example of how people when they are together can fight injustice. Uh, Serbia is the best example of uh, um, of this idea that people must not fear and they must fight. When they are together, they can fight the injustice, and I hope uh, that justice will be served in Serbia in the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Deliana. Uh, keep an eye out for her reports. Go over his arms watch as well, armswatch.com. And uh, we'll be covering this as well later in the week. Of course, the UK column uh, will also be covering this uh, this week, so keep an eye out for our reports there as well. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Deliana Gaitanyeva. And she's an independent investigative journalist from Bulgaria, and she's uncovered this quite amazing story. But this is just the the, the latest installment in years of work uh, that she's put in to this subject. And she's exposed a lot, and she absolutely needs our uh, our support out there. If you're listening to this show or you're watching uh, any of our other reports, um, you know, we, we need everybody to spread the word, talk about this story, share these articles, share her investigations at umswatch.com. Let everybody know uh, what's happening. I think that's the best the best antidote to, to this uh, story is, is more, more exposure, more dissemination, and uh, more access to this material. But uh, thank you so much, Diliana. Thank you for having me. There she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Diliana Gaitanyeva. And we're going to take a short break, and we're going to connect our next guest on the other side. I'm your host, Patrick Henningsen. This is the Sunday Wire. Stick around. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. See, some say I'm just a part of it. Some say I'm just a part of it See, some say I'm just a part of it And I agree with you You may say We're just a mosaic of the lie huh. Just playing on our minds Just playing on our minds Just play it on my mind. 